Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, uh, to be here. Uh, and what I'd like to talk about um, are connected data environments, uh, but also to consider what might be beyond that. Uh, and the way I'd like to do this uh, is to use some project examples uh, to illustrate uh, what we mean by common data environments, uh, but then to look beyond that and start to consider um, what might happen if we can have more interoperable data and greater connection between systems and start thinking about connected data environments uh, and then go beyond that again uh, and consider uh, what might happen uh, if we can federate more widely uh, and come up with connected digital twins. Uh, but to set the scene and to, to start it all off, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about digital transformation uh, and in particular uh, to show how people are at the top and information uh, is in the middle. Uh, and, and the reason for doing this is to say that uh, people in this are, are the most important. I think digital transformation is all about enabling people, but it's enabling people uh, to use information better to make better decisions. And that's where value gets released. But it's also about improving processes and it's about applying technology more wisely. Uh, and so those improvements of processes and technology are really all about um, uh, enabling uh, a better management of information. And that is then about uh, enabling people to make better decisions. So as I say, people at the top and information in the middle. And so this then uh, means that we can see the real value of data uh, and it points to why we need com uh, common data environments. So let's start with common data environments. Uh, and I think at its root, uh, a common data environment is really a means of providing a, a collaborative environment for sharing work. It's about collaborating around shared data. It's about moving from a chaotic data environment uh, where nobody really knows who's got what data, uh, or what is the master data, what is the current version. So moving from that kind of chaos <clears throat> to a common data environment where there's a single source of truth and you've got streamlined processes, much better coordination, reducing rework. And so this is what a common data environment is, is all about. Uh, and a really good example of it uh, would be from some of the work we did on Tideway. Uh, Thames Tideway is a huge project in London, uh, helping to clean up uh, the, the River Thames. Um, uh, about £4.2 billion worth of in investment. Um, and many different organisations uh, working on the, uh, uh, on, on the project. Uh, and so the uh, connected data environment um, that we, we see here uh, is McDonald hosting um, the CDE, uh, coordinating BIM and project controls, um, deliverables and project information. Uh, and, and really the value of this uh, is that it can provide intelligent reporting, information control, kind of clear ownership, um, and maybe most importantly, efficient delivery and coordination. Uh, and so it delivers uh, real significant savings. <clears throat> if we look beyond that though, because there's huge advantages uh, just in having that kind of centralized uh, single source of truth that you get uh, with a common data environment. But we can imagine beyond that uh, and consider what happens if you can get data interoperability um, beyond just a centralized system and start thinking more of a distributed system uh, that is connected. Um, and the connections are principally provided uh, by having interoperable data. Uh, and so this um, uh, you know, still follows the same ideas, uh, the, the, the same intent, the intent that you see enshrined in um, ISO uh, 19650. Um, but uh, it, it unlocks the potential of more value. Uh, and the project that I would call up on, on this one is um, High Speed 2, uh, another huge project in the, in the UK um, 70 kilometers of high-speed railway and 300 assets. Uh, and Montmedon has been in, involved in delivering, uh, delivering this as part of the uh, Mainworks uh, design joint venture uh, with over a thousand designers in 30 different locations and 18 different uh, disciplines. But importantly, uh, one integrated project team. Uh, and uh, at the heart of this, is having a connected data environment 
uh, enabling superior data management and, uh, and making use of user-friendly revolutionary technology. And so what this does uh, is enable much quicker access to data, uh, more informed decision-making, saving all sorts of time. Uh, and um, the, the kind of numbers that we're talking about in, in terms of the saving are, are around 200,000 uh, pounds resulting from more effective uh, asset information management, but a 95% reduction in time taken to access the federated model. Uh, and more than a million pounds of saving through the use of um, um, intelligent content on uh, the Marta platform. So real significant savings <clears throat> from using this kind of approach. Uh, and so I'd like to dig into that approach a little bit more uh, and point out that uh, a connected data environment uh, really is all about connecting up the systems. Uh, and even though there might be independent data sources, it's bringing them together. Um, providing assurance checks, making sure there's uh, the trustworthiness of, of the data, <clears throat> configuration management and project controls um, enabled from this uh, connectivity of the data. Uh, and so really at the heart of it um, is data. Uh, data um, is at the heart of the project. It's key to unlocking value. Uh, and importantly, uh, it's enabling an information flow through the processes uh, because we can see that information is the carrier of value. Uh, and when you get to a decision point, uh, that's where uh, the value of the information is released. So it's all about um, um, getting the right information in the right hands at the right time to make the right decision. But that's all based on data. Uh, and how to get uh, the data interoperable? Well, a large part of it is to do with common coding. Uh, and having a common approach uh, so that even though data might come from different sources, uh, it can come together uh, in a way that uh, that fits. So with data at the heart of, uh, of delivery, uh, driving connectivity, driving uh, integration, you can see that this common coding, uh, enabling the interoperability of data is really key. So it doesn't just rely on having um, a centralized database where all the data sits. The data can sit in different places. It can be distributed, uh, but it's still connected uh, because of that, uh, that common coding. Uh, it means that we need to have um, um, a, a common approach to the data, um, consistent, high quality data models. Uh, and, and what that enables then is this information flow and getting the information flow to the right people. Um, and that, that is absolutely key because it's the people who make the decisions uh, and you need to get the data to the right people. So um, as I started with on that, uh, on that triangle, people at the top and in, information in the middle. Um, and so I'm seeing kind of data as being um, what's at the heart. Um, that then enables the information flow uh, to the right people uh, to make the right decisions. Uh, and, and so if we kind of join all of that up uh, and, and see what a connected data environment does for us, um, we can see that um, it enables um, um, a structured but flexible approach. Uh, it improves uh, the user experience uh, and uh, means that, that, that it becomes data enabled. I wouldn't say data driven, but data enabled. At the absolute heart of it, is this idea uh, of interoperable data founded on common data models, which enables the connected systems. That's really the key uh, that unlocks the value of a connected data environment. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, now, if we see that and we like that for delivery uh, and the, uh, the benefits uh, are already shown. Um, I used a, a very brief pro project example to, to show that, uh, but we recognize that it's really um, in delivery. Um, but the same kind of idea can be taken wider than delivery uh, in, into um, what, what else happens with our infrastructure assets. And so what I'd like to do is take this on um, to the idea of um, connected digital twins. Uh, and so what this diagram is trying to do is show that um, the delivery we just talked about uh, is uh, the little circle off to the, the top right hand corner. Um, it's 
a really important part um, of the construction industry. It's what we do, we deliver. Um, but I think it's really informative for us to see that uh, the delivery is part of a bigger system. Uh, it's about uh, the operation and maintenance and use um, of our infrastructure. And we can look at each individual part of that infrastructure, whether it's energy or transport or water. Uh, but the same kind of, um, uh, of diagram would, uh, uh, would be relevant. Uh, and I think the thing is that if we can see the value of that connected data through delivery, we can also see the value of that connected data through operation, maintenance and use. It's exactly the same story. Uh, and we can also see the value of the information flow through these processes because we know that information carries value. Uh, if the information doesn't flow, then it's blocking value. And so we need that golden thread of information flow through all of these processes. Um, but the, the basic concept of having that um, connected data uh, enabled by um, high quality data models, having the interoperability of data connecting up systems is exactly the same thing for um, the whole of infrastructure and, and not just the delivery of it. Uh, and that's where digital twins and connected digital twins come in. Uh, and so just to illustrate that very briefly, uh, if we think about individual digital twins, uh, it's really a, about a connection between uh, the digital and physical worlds where you have data going one way from physical into digital. Uh, within the digital worlds, we generate insights, helping to make better decisions, which then drives interventions back in the physical world. So we've got this two-way connection. It's a cyber physical system. Uh, but if we can imagine one digital twin, we can imagine many of them. So a digital twin of the train, but also the track, also the signaling. And in the physical world, these are all joined up. But what we can imagine is them being joined up in the digital world too. And so this is what we mean by connected digital twins, a connection in the digital world between digital twins. And, and what enables that is exactly the same thing that we just talked about in terms of a connected data environment. Uh, and uh, if we, if we um, draw that at a, um, an infrastructure level, at the level of the whole of the built environment, uh, we can start to see um, you know, digital worlds emerging. And all over the place, you can imagine lots of different digital twins, and then those connected up um, by this connected data environment. Uh, to enable an ecosystem of connected digital twins. And what's at the heart of it is the same as what we talked about for um, the connected data environment. Uh, really, uh, at the heart, at the core of it, there's a semantic solution uh, which requires a consistent approach to data modeling. It means we need high quality data models that are, that are shared. We also need shared reference data and common security and access protocols. Uh, but essentially, it's just an extension of what we've already talked about for a connected data environment. And so what I hope I've done in, in just a, a few minutes uh, is take us through the, uh, the kind of the logical connections uh, from what we started with, with common data environments, uh, where we can see collaboration around shared data, a single um, source of the truth. Uh, but that can potentially be centralized. Um, we, we can then move beyond that to imagine a distributed connected solution uh, via interoperable data uh, in connected data environments and move beyond that again um, to look at the same but for the whole system, an ecosystem of connected digital twins with secure information flow across organizational and sector boundaries and at the heart of it, a, a semantic solution enabling that federation. So it's a very quick scoot through it, but I hope that that's, that's useful. Uh, thank you very much.